Hi there everyone, Lars here with another Owl House review, brought to you by Camille's Harem. Not just a podcast for novice writers by novice writers, but also a YouTube channel. By novice writers for novice writers. Because writing is an adventure, it's more fun with friends. And today with this video, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to do quicker reviews and analyses of episodes of certain shows as they come out. I want to see if this is a viable option for the channel in the future. If not, well then, at least I've tried, but also we're going to see if I can somehow avoid avoid doing the usual 12 to 15 minute long video. It uses up a lot of time and resources on my end, and I am right now working on trying to get two books published this year, which also is very time consuming. So let's see how I do, and let's just dive right on into it. Coven Day Follies was a really fun episode, and honestly a really great episode to pick up where we left off in this season. Let me just say right off the bat, this was a fantastic Lumity episode. It does a lot to illustrate how Luz and Amity's relationship is continuing to grow, uh, how they are continuing to communicate with each other and overcome certain obstacles within that relationship. No relationship is perfect right off the bat. It takes work. And what is great here in this episode is that we see Amity putting in the work to make this relationship function and we see Luz opening up and being honest and letting her in especially to some of those more horrible things that she's dealing with as an enemy to the emperor and as someone who has made a promise to her mom to return back to earth and stay there with her Luz has got a whole lot going on right here and it's really great to see that this relationship is one of those ways in which these girls can cope through what they are living through and that's really, really fantastic. That's something that great that you want to see in a relationship, that people support each other. And I want to highlight something right here. They didn't get together because of the hardships pushing them together. They got together because they actually like each other. And that is something important. I see it way too often in stories where external circumstances shove these two unlikely people together and they fall in love. Ooh! While that works for some stories, it then feels a little bit superficial. The great thing about the Lumity relationship in the Owl House is that it isn't superficial. I love it. But still talking about relationships, let me just say... I know I'm in the minority, but I am not sold on Ida and Rain. I really am not. I don't feel like their relationship was built up in any kind of good, strong way. We only had one episode really dedicated to their relationship, and that was a great beginning. But it was not enough to sell me on that these two should be together, especially because Rain really is focusing on their own goals. And in fact, if anything, this episode shows through the brainwashing that uh, Tara has put onto Rain that unless Rain has some sort of good guiding star, Rain is capable of doing some pretty bad things because they think it's right. And that is something that I think is really interesting, and I want to see that explored further in later episodes, but it just kind of goes to show that, well, any relationship between them and Ida might not be the healthiest. And here at Camille's Harem, we are all about those good, healthy relationships, and if they're not healthy, we got to understand why and highlight that. Because, yes, fantasy does have an influence on real life. I have seen it, and it can get really good or it can get really bad. And this is one of the reasons why I, in particular, am very conscientious about how relationships are shown in fantasy stories. Now then, again, I know that I'm in the minority saying this right here, that a lot of people love Ida and Rain, and I would like to enjoy this relationship as well. But again, I just didn't feel sold on it. It felt, ex it felt incredibly rushed. And yes, I know that the, the intent here behind this episode was to show that we've got to take every struggle one day at a time. That is a fantastic lesson. And it's one that Ida and Rain are definitely going to have to muddle through. But again, I am not sold on the strength of their relationship. If anything, it's all one-sided on Ida's part. And that came out of nowhere. So, whereas Lumity is really great, Ida and Rain isn't. And I just don't know where things went wrong. I personally think that this is an example of where the writers need to go back and they need to fully explore why this relationship is important to the story and why it needs to work. Once they have that established, they then need to work on how to very naturally and realistically 
build that relationship. All of those answers are kind of lacking where Ida and Rain are concerned, at least from my perspective. Now, let's get into the upper echelons of Emperor Bellus' hierarchy. Holy cow, the Coven heads are monsters, and I love it! I so wish that we would actually get a full third season of the Owl House, because there's so much potential to be had here. There are so many villains that are coming out of the woodworks that are just fantastic foils and obstacles to everyone who is allied with the Owl House, and I want to see more of that. Terra is a fantastic, horrifying villain who is completely loyal to Bellos, and that's one of the things that's really interesting to see. The Coven Heads aren't just brainwashed, they are sold! They are sold on the Day of Unity, and that makes them incredibly dangerous because they are willing to follow Bellos no matter what, and they are willing to murder no matter what. Oh, that makes them so fantastic as villains and as obstacles to the heroes. I also love how Bellos is using very, very effective propaganda to basically get the entire Boiling Isles onto his side to enact the Day of Unity. We still don't fully understand what the Day of Unity will actually all entail, but we can tell it's going to be pretty horrifying. But it's also really interesting that he has used the whole Coven system to basically segregate all magic users. and. If we remember correctly, only those in the Emperor's Coven are allowed to practice all forms of magic legally. But here, Bellos promises that those who follow him will be saved on the Day of Unity and get to experience a utopia free of wild magic, and everyone that we see who joins him will be given the Emperor's brand and will be allowed to practice all forms of magic. That is implied by the propaganda that he's using, and that is something that everyone wants because everyone has been segregated into different covens. He is promising them great freedom if only they will follow him. That is brilliant. Oh, it makes him such a great villain. Now, to dive into the heart of this episode a little bit, we come to what both Amity and Luz say that we're just going to have to take it one day at a time. This is fantastic right here, because when it comes to writing problems that characters go through, you can't just solve a problem all in one chapter, or in one amazing scene, or in one episode. If you do that, it trivializes everything that those characters were going through. Let's say you have a character who's struggling with a guilty conscience throughout an entire season, and then in one episode, they confess, and then boom, everything's done. No consequences, no more guilty conscience, no more grappling with the, with, with the horrors of having held onto that secret for so long. No, it's just done. Well, then what was the point of all of that? If a character is going through something very traumatic, or very dangerous, or very special, or something that's just meant to take a whole lot of time, you can't just solve the matter in one chapter or one episode. That's the beauty of the, of the Follies right here, of this particular episode of Coven Day Follies is that there is no magical cure. They tried it. They tried. Luz tries to somehow solve all of Kikimura's problems all in one fantastic scheme. Ida plans to just beat sense into rain, but it doesn't work. And that means now that they are going to have to struggle. It means that they're going to have to learn. They're, they're going to have to adapt. That is fantastic. That is brilliant because it shows great character growth and it opens up possibilities for even more character growth down the line. And it also emphasizes just how important these many struggles are. For Luz in particular, the promise that she made to her mother is like a guillotine blade hanging over her neck. It means the end to everything that she wants to be, everything that she has become. And she has to somehow find a way to reconcile all of that. There will be no simple answer. And when I think about what the ending titles are supposed to be for Amphibia, the hardest thing, well, watching this episode right here, Coven Day Follies, makes me wonder who's the person between the two shows that actually has to do the hardest thing, hmm? Oh my gosh, I do not, I do not envy Luz's situation right now. She has a lot to go through. And again, this is really brilliant writing right here. This is what, this is something that we as novice writers should really take away. If you're going to create a problem for a character to overcome, it needs to matter. 
it needs to linger. There needs to be lingering consequences. The answer can't be as simple as it might sometimes appear. Even if it is a pretty simple solution, there are long reaching consequences for every difficult, worthwhile thing. So those are my thoughts coming out of this most recent episode of The Owl House. I'm really, really excited for more. And again, this episode just goes to show why The Owl House is one of the most popular and one of the most powerful animated stories right now airing really on any kind of channel. The one thing is, I'm just wondering where things went wrong with building up the relationship between Ida and Rain. Well, we'll explore more of that in the upcoming episodes, I have no doubt, and I'm really hoping that they do manage to pull the rabbit out of the hat and bring everything full circle because I really do enjoy the show. I want it to succeed. So those are my thoughts. That's my analysis as a novice writer. If you're looking for more writing advice, please check out our other videos here on our YouTube channel. You can also check out our podcast episodes found on Podbean, iTunes, Google Play, Spotify, The Works. We have writing exercises over at our Pinterest page, and we would love for you to join us over at our community of novice authors. Links for all of those sites and more are down in the description. And until the next video, y'all, tschüss.